Good morning and praise the Lord. Welcome to the New Bethel Virtual Sunday School class coming from Kansas City, Kansas at 745 Walker Avenue where Bishop A. Glenn Brady is the pastor and we rightly divide the word of truth. I am Elder Mary Green and I will be your teacher for today. But before I start the lesson, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank and praise you for all that you have done, not just for myself, not just for New Bethel, but for America. Just in case no one else thanks you, Lord, we thank you for intervening into our affairs. God, thank you for your hand, Lord, your strong arm in the affairs of America. Thank you for keeping us against the odds, Lord. Thank you for the provisions you have made against the odds, God. Thank you for how you have brought people out of prison this year, for how you've made ways for folks to get jobs in this pandemic, God, how you have kept your people in their right minds. God, today, we want to thank you for coming to this earth and flirt fleshly form to save us, Lord Jesus, to dwell among your people. Oh God, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I am so glad to be teaching today. And I must start off with saying, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. What a mighty God we serve. And guess what? Can you believe we're down to December the 20th of 2020? Looking back over this year, many of us were not sure if we would be here. Oh, but because of God, we made it. So now let's dive into the word today. I want to go backward and bring you up to date. Last Sunday, we had some technical difficulties, and when the lesson was converted, it kind of messed up the whole presentation. So I just want to go back to last week's lesson so you could appreciate this week's lesson. Last week, we talked about a we talked about call before birth, okay? And it was divided into three different sections. The lesson was found in Matthew chapter 1 verses 18, 18 through 25 and it was divided into the three sections. The first section talked about a divine conception where it told the story about Mary's uh, becoming pregnant, uh, Jesus' birth. And it described that in that section that an angel came to Mary and told her that she would carry Jesus this divine holy child and that this thing would be of a divine nature. Well, at that time she was espoused to Joseph, which means in the Jewish culture, there was three parts actually to a wedding. The engagement was actually made when the parents promised the kids to each other. And that's usually done between the ages of five through eight. And then the espouse part came when the two people actually agreed to it and they became husband and wife. So at this time, here's Joseph and Mary becoming husband and wife and Mary tells Joseph that she's pregnant. Well, it says in the scripture that Joseph was a just man. Another way of putting just is righteous. So he knew the law, but he also knew God. The law stated that if Mary was pregnant and it wasn't by him, that he would take her before the people and they would stone her to death. But because he knew God, <laughs> he was a compassionate man. So he did not want Mary to be uh, killed. He looked at her. He did not want to make a public display of her. So he sought to put her away privately. That was the first part of the lesson. Then we get divine correction. Well, in divine correction, we found out in the scriptures that an angel of the Lord came to Joseph in a dream. And in that dream, he told Joseph, in essence, not everyday language, hold up, Joseph. She has not been with another man. This is a holy thing. 
This is of the Holy Spirit. This must take place. And she shall have a son and his name shall be called Jesus. So he actually tells Joseph what is going on. Now Joseph is asleep. Now I want you to watch this very closely. When Joseph awakens, he takes Mary as his wife, but he does not cohabitate with her until after the child is born. And when the child is born, he calls the child's name Jesus, just like he was instructed in the dream. Then the last part of the lesson talked about moving from divine clarity to human obedience. So in that section, it showed that Joseph went from getting clarification and correction and to being obedient. And that is what God is looking to us to do. When he gives us instructions and he makes it clear, he wants us to follow through, be obedient. And I could not start that lesson today without telling you that because we found out even about Matthew, how Matthew, a little background history, was actually written 15 years after the book of Mark. And if you pay attention to Matthew, you will find out that Matthew has some information from Mark and Luke. And it was written by the apostle St. Matthew. So those are some things that we learned last week. Now I want to get into today's lesson. And I'm coming to you from the Apostolic Way commentary. And it has in here the King James Version of the Bible. Our lesson is called today, A Regal Response to Holy Light. So let's get started today. In rightly dividing the word of truth, we have three objectives for the lesson today. The first objective, well, before I get to the objectives, let me just back up a little bit. I want to talk to you about where the lesson is found. It is found in Matthew chapter 2, verses 7 through 15. Our devotional reading is found in Exodus chapter 1, verses 8 through 22. And our memory verse is found in Matthew chapter 2, at verse 11. So let's talk about our devotional reading. A lot of times we do not tie that in, and I think that's a mistake sometimes because it gives you greater insight on the lesson. So Exodus chapter 1 verses 8 through 22 talks about a time that Joseph had been in with the Pharaoh and things were going well, but then there came a Pharaoh who did not know Joseph. And what did he do? He put heavy taxation upon the people of God. He had a problem, and you're going to see some of that in this lesson today. He had a problem, and his problem was he noticed the people of God, the Israelites, were multiplying. No matter what he did to them and how he punished them and how he taxed them to do different things for him, they kept multiplying. So he sought to get rid of them because he was in fear that they would overpower them, the Egyptians. So he had talked to the midwives and told the midwives, listen, when these mothers, these Hebrew mothers have children, I want you, if it's a male child, to destroy them, kill them. But the midwives paid attention to God and they did not do it. So when the Pharaoh found out, the midwives told Pharaoh, well, you know, these women are different from our women. Before we can get to them, they already had the baby. So the Pharaoh became so upset, he put out a mandate that every male child born to and under, kill them, throw them in the river. So now you're gonna to see today how that connects with the lesson. So let us uh, read the memory verse, Matthew 2, verse 11. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Watch those gifts. You don't give those gifts to anyone. 
something I want you to understand. We're not talking about baby Jesus now. We're talking about the child. He's not in a manger. He's in a house. Second point I want to point out is he's not a babe. He's a young child. And the gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh are gifts you give to people of great status. Okay? So let's move on in our lesson. Our objectives today. Objective one. Explain how the wise men point to the universality of Jesus' mission. Secondly, grieve for those who suffer innocently due to the world's brokenness and sin. My God. And thirdly, we want to join with people of every ethnicity and culture to worship Jesus, the King of all nations. So let's get started. Matthew chapter 2, we're going to start reading, and it's from verses 7 through 11. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they, oh, excuse me, I think I went back to the old lesson, and I want to get to today's lesson. See, I'm so much in call before birth. Okay, let's get to Matthew chapter 2, verses 7 through 15. That's where we're going. Okay. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. Now when they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream, that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. And when he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt and was there until the death of Herod, Herod, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying, out of Egypt have I called my son. So we have went through 15 verses in the second chapter of Matthew, starting with verse 7. Now, this lesson also can be divided into three sections. If we look at verses 7 through 8 in the scripture, we could look at it as foreigners before a king. So, these wise men were summoned before the king because the king wanted to inquire where Jesus was. Okay? Now, he tells them, tells them to bring back the news. Just let me know where, you're at, where he's at so I can go and worship him. And we learn from this particular section that he really didn't want to worship that Christ child. He wanted to kill him because he was afraid that he would take his place. So he was infuriated that the Messiah had come. Now listen, he is actually king over the Jews, so he should have been excited about the birth of the Messiah, but he's not. He is upset. Oh my goodness, can we apply that to the day? <laughs> 
for a new person coming on the scene in America, the things that has been done to stop the, the move in America from having a new president, can you see some similarities? Some inquiring, doing things so we think that are nice to make sure we keep our position. Oh, wow. Nothing changes. Now, the second part of our lesson would be from verses 9 through 11. It deals with foreigners actually before the king. Okay? Before we talk about foreigners before a king, that was a human king. But now we're talking about foreigners before the king. Isn't it amazing? After Herod gives the wise men an assignment, they go, they follow the star, the star leads them. But when they see the child, their response is totally different from the king of the Jews at that time. These wise men fall down and they worship Ha! Jesus, because they understand from just being there before they were following a visible light in the sky. But now they're seeing the light, the holy light, the Christ child, and recognizing who he is, they fall down to worship him. They open up their treasures and they don't pull out anything. They pull out gold, frankincense, and myrrh which points to the fact that this is king of kings. He is the one that is going to come and put us together. He's going to come and do away with separation. He's going to come to save his people. And they bow. Now, they were not as well learned about the law like the king was that sent him. Okay? Oh, my goodness. What a difference. And now the last part of the lesson, verses 13 to 15, talks about the Messiah in a foreign land. Now listen, it talks about how after the wise man departed, God comes again in a dream. We heard about a dream in last week's lesson called Before Birth. A dream, okay, that Joseph had where the angel came to him, okay? Uh, now we are talking about a dream here, okay? And it's coming to Joseph and telling Joseph to take the child and his mother and leave from where he's at and go into Egypt because a prophecy has been made that out of Egypt <laughs> Woo! and stay there that it might be, feel, be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying, out of Egypt have I called my son. So God fulfilled his word out of Egypt. Now, what is this saying to us? Why am I bringing this up to you? The star, this response to the holy light. We're talking about more than the star in the sky. We're talking about Jesus, the light of the world. How will you respond? We heard how the wise men responded by bowing down and worshiping him. They worshiped him for who he was, not for what he had done. He had performed no miracles then, but they understood who he was. When you understand who you are, who Jesus is, how will you respond to the holy light? That's the question today. What gifts will you bring? <laughs> what gifts will you bring that will show that you understand that this Jesus is King of Kings, this Jesus is our Savior, this Jesus is God in human form coming down to dwell amongst us to save us and to unite us. Hallelujah. How will you respond with your gifts? Will you praise him? Will you worship him? How will you respond with your finances, with your time, with your love for one another? Now, 
God still speaks people. We hear how God keeps speaking in dreams. Well, when I went to college, I learned a lot of times while we're asleep, our mind sometimes is most at rest where God can communicate with us and we could hear clearly. So I want you to understand that God still speaks. He spoke to the wise man. He spoke to Joseph. And guess what? God will speak to you. Shh, listen. Because last week in the lesson, we learned about Joseph being a just man, how he actually listened to God. And that was the missing skill that we as people today don't execute. We don't listen. We're aware that someone is talking to us, but we're really not listening. Because listening requires a response, but listening requires understanding. Listening requires evaluating. Listening requires you to be obedient. Joseph last week did not argue with God when God sent his angel on the dream. He obeyed. Okay. God wants us to obey. God wants us to not argue with him. When he gives us directives for our lives, sometimes he'll give it to you in a dream. Sometimes he'll give it to you in a vision. Sometimes it'll be on a billboard. Sometimes it'll be through something someone says, and you will know that God is talking to you. How will you respond to the Holy One? How will you obey or will you question God? I hope you will obey. If you notice, God responded to Joseph in a, God rather spoke to Joseph in a dream at night. And Joseph got up and moved at night. (laughs) Ooh, that's a whole story there. A whole nother revelation. As some people would say, that will preach a night traveler. You got to learn how to move in your darkness. Glory, hallelujah. When God speaks to you and he gives you clarity, don't be afraid to move. God will always make provisions when he gives you an assignment. Joseph had an assignment and he got up and he moved at night. You need to get ready to travel because God is about to do something with you. God has called you, and that's what we learned in last week's lesson. You have been called. Not only was Jesus called before his birth, you have been called. There's an assignment on your life. Get ready to move. God will give you clarity, but don't move without the clarity. Remember, there was a prophecy that went out, and what does God say about his word in Isaiah 55, 11? Well, let's check it out. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. When God sends a prophecy, his word will not fall on the ground. It will accomplish that what he said it would do. Don't be afraid. Don't worry about it. Fear not. So in Matthew 2 verses 15, he, the prophecy was, and was there, Joseph was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying, out of Egypt have I called my son. (laughs) God's word will not lie. What has God called you out of? See, because when he calls you out, he sends you to. (laughs) Okay. It will manifest. Let's see. Joel chapter 2 verses 28 through 29. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions, and upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. God has promised to fill you with the gift of the Holy Ghost. 
And he said, afterwards, afterwards, and it should come to pass afterwards. Ah, what is afterwards? Well, if you go back and read Joel chapter 2, verses 15 through 17, you'll find some things that transpired before we get to verse 28 and 29 with God making the promise or the prophetic word that he's going to fill you and your children and, and your sons and daughters and what would happen with them and your, what would happen to your handmaids and your servants. Listen. Before all of that happens, there's something you and I have to do to prepare for the afterwards, to prepare for the infilling of the Holy Ghost, to prepare for the relationship with God. Be holy light. We must sanctify ourselves. <laughs> Woo! You need, we have to repent of the things that we have done wrong and the things that we haven't done that God has told us to do. Then we must fast, okay? Deny ourselves. Oh, bring our flesh before God. Weep. Call out to the Lord. And then watch him work. Ooh, he's waiting on you. He's waiting on you. He's waiting on you to respond to the call. So, Will you respond to the holy light? If so, what will your response be to the holy light? Jesus called. Jesus is the holy light. Jesus is the holy light. Will you say, yes, Lord, I give. I repent of my wrong. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Baptize me in your name. Will that be your response? It's time for you, my friend, to join with the people of all cultures and ethnicities to worship Jesus, the true king. You can only worship him in spirit and in truth. And you can't worship one you don't know. So how can you know this holy light? I'm glad you asked. I want you to call 913 281 two zero zero two someone will answer the phone and talk to you about how you can have an encounter with this holy light oh how you can repent how you can be baptized in his name how you can be baptized in his spirit i hope you've learned something today from this lesson i hope that you've learned that you have a choice on how you respond to this holy light. Will you respond as Herod, the king, and seek to destroy God's heritage, God's people? Or will you choose to worship him in spirit and in truth? God bless you. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this time to rightly divide your word of truth. I pray today, Father, that someone will come to know the holy light, you, Jesus, and that their sins will be forgiven and that they will receive the precious gift of the Holy Ghost because you promised it to them and that you keep your word, Father. Your word will not return void. Now, Lord, remember all of those viewing this presentation of your word. Be with them during this season where we celebrate you coming to the earth in fleshly form. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.